Well, welcome everybody. I'm Father Bill. And I am Aaron Nieves. And we are doing our Wednesday Friday video all in one, smash into one kind of thing. So normally she's doing one on Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I am putting together typically something on Friday or for Friday. But it is right now, it's, it's Wednesday. Yes, it is. And um, some people are getting off work early because of Thanksgiving. That's right. I have to tell you, I went to Costco. What a nut. But I got you in. You did. I did. Oh but I got in and out under an hour. Oh, wow. I know. I was there with my sister just the other day, and I cannot believe that the racks of pecan pies and pumpkin pies, and I, I think I don't saw apple pies. Oh, they had apple. Did they? That's, I was there for pie. I can tell you what I found. But what scared me, I went up and there was this little measly table with apple and with pecan and there was no pumpkin. And I thought, no way. Did I wait too long? Well, what? guess what? what? You know, the meat, those meat bins that they put, like, it was filled with pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, guess you still have time if you want to get a pumpkin pie at Costco. Yes, you do. And I've got to tell you, they're five ninety nine. What a bargain. Whoa. I know. Seriously? Seriously. And you know what an apple is? fourteen ninety nine. Well, I guess it's a little more involved, isn't it? I guess. I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, well, I digress. Well, that's a little beyond my... I know my sister, Marianne, she made almost the perfect pumpkin pie. I took a picture of it. And uh, posted it on Facebook, and I'm really proud of her. She did a great job. Yeah, I think that takes skill. Yeah, well, obviously uh, one I'm not even trying to emulate. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know that reminds me of a uh, a Thanksgiving Day story, and that Thanksgiving Day story happens to be about how a pumpkin pie became an apple pie. How did you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Are you glad she asked? I'm glad she asked. Yeah, we're so. Uh, uh, at living this, yes. Um, so it was many years ago, and I was a high school teacher. And it was my job as the person coming to Salem to see my family. I was living in Portland, and it was my job to bring the pies, and I was going to bring the pumpkin pie. So I went to a, a local s a supermarket, and I grabbed two frozen, right? I'm not a cook. It's two frozen pumpkin pies. That's okay. It works. I've done it. Okay, well, I don't know, maybe you've done this, I don't know. So I get this pumpkin pie, so I put it in a bag, okay, this way, not flat, this way, they're frozen, right, no big deal. So then I put it in the car, and then I drive an hour to Salem, and I give it to my sister, or my sisters, or there's, there's several of us there gathered, and then there's cooking going on, the turkey, the whole bit, and then we have dinner, and after dinner, it's sort of about pretty much time for for dessert, or at least to get going on dessert. So it, we gotta get that pumpkin pie ready, right? So you pull the pumpkin pies out of the bag, pull them out, let them lay flat, and open them up, and guess what happened? What? They defrosted. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, and not only did they defrost, as soon as they, we opened it up, or I don't remember it was me or one of my sisters, but we opened it up nonetheless, and just all the pie filling just goes, just shoots out <laughs> all the way across the table, or the countertop, and onto the floor, and it was a big mess. And, and uh, I believe there were tears involved, because everybody wanted a piece of pie, <laughs> and there were no pies. That's terrible. Yeah, I really well, pretty well stunk that one up. Um, so, but luckily, luckily, it was not too late. I was able to go to the same kind of supermarket nearby, and there's really no pumpkin pies left. Oh, I bet. <laughs> but I can get an apple pie. So I bought two apple pies, uh, two apple pies, <laughs> and uh, everything was all great then. So that's why how you turn a pumpkin pie into an apple pie story. And it's, it is so famous in our family that it, uh, we have a family cookbook, and it's actually one of the, you know, one of the recipes. recipes. <laughs> yes, yes, one of the recipes. Mm -hmm. Means, you know, bring a pie that defrosts and then replace it with a. Well, so I'm curious. So if it was frozen, would you just stick the frozen pie into the. Yeah. Into the oven? It yeah, you fine. could. Okay. Maybe another time, but this year, <laughs> luckily, Marianne, my sister, is, is uh, done a fine job. I witnessed uh, her making it, so that'll be great. That's my that's my story. Then, pretty well stuck into it. <laughs> Thanks be to God for pumpkin pie. Yeah. So you know, Thanksgiving is a time for a lot of fun. I hope. 
Uh, I know there's also times for movies. Uh, sometimes you can go see movies or families gathered for movies or play games. Um, you know, maybe there's some, maybe some football games that people are. <laughs> I wonder what game he's thinking about. Yes, it used to be called something about a civil war, but it's uh, yeah, the Oregon Ducks versus the the Oregon State Beavers, and, uh, and of course you know where I'm standing on that. So, <laughs> I love the Ducks, uh, but when we have to play each other, I have to root for my Beavers. You know, this is going to be a good game because they're doing really well. Ducks, I'm sure, are favored. I haven't looked at the uh, whatever the, the uh, stats are for that, but I'm pretty sure no. them being ranked. Uh, really high, and uh, we're actually Oregon State is actually ranked, I think, 22 or like six, I think. So yeah, it's in their favor, but I just hope it's a good game. I really do watch these things for not just the game, but also for sportsmanship. You know, that they're not being you know rough with each other because the idea of civil war sometimes there have been fights in some of these games. I mean, I don't like that at all. I bet there are even fights at dinner tables over. <laughs> You know, that's probably true. You know, actually this time of the year, um, this is the time I, I kind of call it mark, uh, time that's being marked. Like we think about how there was this last year and who is here this year and sometimes who's not here anymore. And that can bring some, some heavy thoughts to people, some sadness because um, they're not here anymore. Well, you mean exactly that we begin to mark our time. Mark time. Did I say, that's what I meant to say. Yes. No, but I think that's what okay, that is time. what you said. Okay. And I think we mark it by who's there, who isn't there, and how do we celebrate without those people. Mm -hmm. right. You were talking something about something like that. Well, earlier. you know, one of my most profound losses was my dad. And um, our kids were fairly small still, but our tradition really was to go to my mom and dad's home, which was kind of up on the foothills of California. And we would go and celebrate Thanksgiving. And that was always a big thing. And it was our tradition. And suddenly, during um, two months before Thanksgiving, my father passed away. Mm -hmm. And we were going to... Just two weeks before? No, um, September. Oh, okay. So September, I should know this, 15th. So, but in the middle of all of this, we couldn't even begin to think about how are we going to celebrate Thanksgiving? How are we going to cook? Do we go up to my mom's, now my mom's home, um, without my dad there and try to celebrate? So we didn't. Um, so some of you know, Mark and I are part of a monastic community. And I called them at the very last moment to see, because they have a retreat that happens on Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah, they do. What, what community is this? I don't know. Um, Benedictine. So oh. St. Andrew's Abbey down in Valermo, California. I did not know this. So what they do, they have a Thanksgiving weekend, and it includes dinner and prayer and everything that could go with that. And so I called and I said, I know this is last minute, but do you think you could let our family come? And they moved heaven and earth to allow us to be there. Wow. And what's interesting, usually you stay in the guest rooms, um, which are like little motel-ish kind of. Kind right, of. the retreat centers. This is not. Right, that's not glamour. It's, it's not like even the Motel 6, it's like the Motel <laughs> exactly. But you know what they have there? When they bought the property that the monastery is on, there's a ranch house. Hmm. And they put us in the ranch house. I bet that was a little nicer than oh, Hotel 2, right? It's amazing. It's They have put it together with antiques and just everything that you could possibly want. So it was like being in somebody's home. And... We had our kids, our kids were school age, and you know, here they were facing that long weekend, no TV, no, none of the, you know, the things that they normally would have, but they played games, they baked cookies for the monks, which the monks appreciated. <laughs> you can come anytime. <laughs> exactly. And they lived monastery time which was really pretty 
holy and special. Wow, monastery time. That means like early rise and early to bed. And, all. and silence and all the things that kind of go with that. So, yeah. But thanks be to God for monks who were not only generous with making room for our family, but, you know, the other part of it is um, their willingness to take on our children, my mom, all of us. Well, that kind of that kind of pivots it to something different than just an absence of your dad. Right now, you have the presence of the faithful community that's there, helping you form a, a new memory, exactly. and also praying, praying for your dad and the family. Yes. No, it was the most beautiful and profound way to make uh, something very difficult into something better. So, and then by the time Christmas came, we figured out what we were going to do. And so we set a, t a place at our table for my dad. And, oh. And, and we're able to move forward. Yeah. But like you said, you mark time. Mm -hmm. So that whole first year, it's the first, you know, Thanksgiving without, first Christmas, first whatever, New Year's, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Well, and folks, maybe that's going on for you. And if it is, know of our prayers. And consider coming to Mass tomorrow. We're going to publish this as soon as we can so that uh, you have the opportunity to reflect on things. And and if you can come to Mass, it's a great way to be with the community. And we'll be giving um, our, our operatory, which we don't normally do during Mass since COVID, but we're having a special operatory where we gather uh, non-perishable food items. We'll be putting them in the officer behind here uh, during that time if you have uh, any kind of monetary donations you want to make that can be done too. all goes to our food closet. Um, but you'll be with a community, uh, praising God, thanking God, of course. And I think this is the most profound coming to th uh, a mass mm -hmm. where we have the Eucharist, Eucharist meaning the word Thanksgiving, uh, and, right. and it's Thanksgiving day. So it's just, he's the Lord of all and ultimately everything comes from God. So he's the ultimate source for all of our, our gladness and Thanksgiving, whether it be you have your dad because of, uh, God, and you're here, and I'm here because not just our parents, but of God, of course. Well, and you know, whenever we are gathered at Mass, all of heaven celebrates with us, yeah. and we hope that our loved ones are there. That's an exact. That's a great point. Yeah, and when you receive the Eucharist mm -hmm. of those beloved uh, who have passed and are, are in heaven, then when we receive the Eucharist, uh, we receive uh, heaven. You could say. We receive Jesus and all that heaven, or Jesus is present to, which is the saints and the angels in heaven. That could be your mom, your dad, my, my mom and dad, um, or a fam other family members. Maybe somebody in your family was passed on, or a friend. Um, and maybe you have some traditions that uh, you've done before. Maybe you can kindle them back into what you're doing for this particular Thanksgiving. There's so many things that could be done, a way of honoring our loved ones turning some sadness into some uh, joy. Uh, I think having God in, involved in that is the key. Remembering God is with us, he loves us deeply, and he wants to walk with us on our journeys, whatever they may be of joy or of sorrow. So you tell them what today's feast is because uh -huh. that saint has a saying that we should probably share with them. Uh, yeah, actually, there's three saints today. Yeah, that's right, Clement. Uh, Clement, Columban, I think it's pronounced right. Yeah. And then uh, I think it's uh, Miguel Augustine Pro. I don't know. If he has two first, his first names. We've got them in the wrong order. But uh, he was famous for a phrase that uh, he proclaimed right before his martyrdom. And this was in Mexico. And the Mexican government at that time was uh, cracking down. That's even actually quite tame to say that on the Catholic Church. Particularly, so closing down churches and arresting and killing uh, bishops and priests if they could find them. And of course, he was uh, one of those that they captured. And before they uh, killed him on the firing line, he said, Viva Cristo Rey, which means. Viva! Yeah, it means live. long live Christ the King. And so this is, that's the response. So at, I go to a Spanish Mass typically in my past. There would be a, a mass. If I just said that, you know, Viva Cristo Rey! Viva! Viva. That's right, Viva. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's keep that in mind. I mean, hopefully we're not being martyrs. 
And don't martyr yourself over eating too much uh, turkey, you know, <laughs> tryptophan poisoning. And uh, we'll just put you to sleep. Thank goodness. We'd like to see you alive and well after you finish eating all of that turkey. Right. And that means you can come to Mass on Friday, even Friday morning at 8.30 like you normally do. And, uh, you know, uh, repent of maybe overeating. I don't know. It's, it's gay. Or prepare yourself for eating it again. Oh, that's right. Seconds, right? <laughs> that's right. Seconds, thirds. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, hey, uh, from all of us here at Holy Trinity, and for myself, and for me, and all of our staff, we want to wish you a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks be to God. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.